Segmentation is another memory management technique that is in common use today. Segmentation can actually be combined with paging and with virtual memory, but we will start learning about simple segmentation, which is not combined with either of these other memory management techniques. Segmentation is really just a variant of dynamic partitioning where an individual process is broken into segments. A single process is usually split into at least three segments. One for data, so all the variables that are used in the program. One for code, this is the portion of the process that is actually executed on the processor. And then the stack, which dynamically tracks the progress of the code for, for example, procedure calls. Now, more complex programs will have even more segments. For example, in a object-oriented program, you will often have many different code segments across different objects. However many segments you have, the idea behind segmentation is to break the process up into separate segments, like so. Now that the segments of this process have been split up, they can be placed in different regions of memory. In other words, this entire process no longer has to be contiguous within memory. And having more smaller chunks of data to organize will usually make it easier to utilize memory efficiently than having fewer large chunks, as we see here. Because the manner in which a process is segmented directly corresponds to separate components of the program or process, this approach to memory management is said to be visible to the programmer. This is in contrast to paging, which is entirely handled by the operating system and happens behind the scenes. So paging is considered invisible to the programmer, whereas segmentation is considered visible. In other words, the programmer can choose which segment to address within a program. In fact, in x86 assembly code, you can explicitly denote segments by putting a period at the start of a region of text in the assembly file you are writing. So dot data in an x86 assembly code file is the beginning of the data segment. Let's take a look now at how segments would actually be placed into memory. So now this partial rectangle represents all of memory and it trails off at the bottom here. And I've placed two segments, segment 0 and segment 1, somewhat arbitrarily into memory. The actual placement of segments depends on some sort of placement ag algorithm as with dynamic partitioning. On the right side, I've shown some memory addresses in hexadecimal once again. So here is a hexadecimal memory address, and this hexadecimal memory address is where the segment ends and this region of empty memory starts. And this address is where the next segment begins, and this address is where that segment ends. So each segment can have its own length. And I've also shown what the lengths of these segments are, once again, in bytes and using hexadecimal. And I'm also denoting the size of this empty region of memory. So because we have empty regions of memory between segments, we once again have external fragmentation. Segmentation will have external fragmentation because the segments can have arbitrary size and may not always be able to fit precisely in empty regions of memory. There will never be internal fragmentation, however, because the size of the segment matches the size of the request. So let's see what happens if we add another segment. The new segment, S2, has a size of EFF000 bytes, and this is a hex number. This is fewer bytes 
than the 1F004F0 bytes between the end of segment 0 and the beginning of segment 1. So this empty space had enough room for S2 to be placed inside of it. Now there's still some empty space left. This is once again external fragmentation. And I placed S2 here arbitrarily. The, once again, the actual placement of S2 would depend on some placement algorithm. Now we have these segments in memory, but we need to know how the operating system tracks where these segments are and how it computes physical memory addresses shown here, here, and here given logical addresses with respect to a specific segment. So let's look at how that computation works. The operating system tracks where the segments are located in memory using a segment table. The entries in a segment table must maintain the base address of the segment, meaning where it starts in memory, and the length of the segment. So segment 0 is at index 0 in this segment table, and the base address 05005F02 is this physical memory address where that segment starts. And then the length here, 30FA130, is the number of bytes between the start of that segment and where it ends. And you'll see that the other segments are stored similarly. So given this information and given a logical address that a program specifies with respect to a specific segment, how do we figure out the actual physical address in memory that the program wants to access? Let's first write out a logical address. This is a logical address. It contains as many hex digits as a physical address. So they are the same size, in this case 32 bits. The two components of a logical address are the segment number, which corresponds to the index in this table, and the offset, which is a relative offset from the base address of a given segment. So this logical address corresponds to segment 1, and occurs at offset FEADE. -E. Note that because the offset consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hex digits, which is 24 binary bits, this means that the maximum segment size allowed in this system is 2 to the 24 bytes. Let's see how the operating system computes the physical address from this logical address now. We take the segment number 0, 1, 1, and we get the base address. We add to the base address the offset that is part of the logical address. Now, before I actually carry out this addition, you should note that this offset value is less than the length of that segment. The operating system must confirm that the offset is less than the segment length on every address calculation, which is a small drawback of this memory management system. If the offset is ever larger than the segment length, it leads to a segmentation fault, which is a common and annoying error, especially in compiled languages like C++. Now, the result of this addition is the following. 
this resulting text value is a physical memory address. And because we were trying to compute an address in segment one, that address value will be right in this general area, slightly larger than 0A000522, but less than 0B and then all zeros. So this physical address around here is indeed within segment one. This calculation process was slightly more complicated than address calculation with paging, but the fact that it allows the user to have more control over how memory is broken up into pieces is a benefit of segmentation. We will see in a later video how segmentation is combined with virtual memory and in yet another video how it is combined with paging.